Halifax bomber JD214, nicknamed Midnight Cocktail of 419 Moose Canadian Squadron, was shot down on the night of 24th, 25th of June 1943 by German FW190 fighters. Flight engineer Reginald Cleaver tells of his experience of Midnight Cocktail's crash landing, which he and the rest of the crew miraculously survived. We had a load of hits in the starboard wing and the whole wing was alight from end to end and two engines on that side. First of all, I tried to feather the first one because it had obviously stopped and, and the prop was whizzing round, so I tried to feather it. And the first thing that happened, the uh, propeller and reduction gear fell off. And the next thing I knew, the engine had fallen, actually, literally fallen off the wing completely. The other engine I managed to feather, we'd operated the fire extinguishers, but of course it was the holes in the tanks and the fuel running out inside the wing that was all burning behind us, burning over the tail fin. Everything had gone wrong. We'd got fires inside. The radar equipment had been on fire because I think it had been hit by a cannon shell and the whole thing was on fire. We got small fires inside, which the, um, the wireless operator was busy putting out. I was busy trying to juggle the fuel tanks to turn off fuel to the starboard wing and get fuel keep going to the port wing. Hydraulics had been shot away, so the undercarriage had come down. The uh, bomb doors had come down, as come open as well. So we jettisoned the bombs because there was no way we were going to get to the target. And we just sort of, well, lower and lower and lower. Because of the drag on the aircraft, it was an awful job to keep it, keep it in the air because the two port engines were flogging away. I mean, they were actually glowing almost red hot because we got the throttles open so far and the boost pressure was so high, way, way above our normal limitations, and the, the, we knew the engine couldn't last long. We knew we weren't going to make the North Sea. All we could see was trees, and there was nothing we could do. And by the grace of God, the fuselage went between trees, and the wings were taken off in the trees, and the fuselage hit the ground, and we fell out. <laughs> Reg was rescued by the Dutch resistance, but then captured by the Gestapo. Believed to be a spy, he was locked up in solitary confinement in total darkness. On the day he faced the firing squad, he was rescued at the very last minute by the Luftwaffe, who claimed him as their prisoner. I was with the, with the Dutch resistance. Um, they were looking after me and trying to get me out of uh, Holland, but couldn't at the time, and I was... Uh, with them too long and I got caught by the Gestapo and they handed me over to the SS. They locked me up in in uh, an underground cell in the SS headquarters in Arnhem. It was about a nine foot square cell with just a concrete floor and a hole in the middle. If you wanted to pee or anything that's where it went and completely in the dark, no light. The only light that came in is if they uh, came in to bring water or food and the SS, they were, they'd been well trained in brutality because they would uh, uh, come in and bring anything, it might have been soup or something, and then they would throw it over me and then hit me with a rifle butt. That went on for quite some time. It's very difficult to explain what happens when you're in the dark continually on your own. You completely lose all sense of time. And in a way, your body sort of shuts down. You, you go into, it's almost as if you're in a trance. You seem to be cut off from everything. And uh, it, you're in another world. And uh, it's a very strange place. They had obviously decided that I was a spy and a saboteur and one morning they dragged me out and took me into this yard and I had a job to see because I'd been in the dark for so long and it took me a while for my eyes to adjust. 
Welcome. Make out this firing squad and uh, the SS officer in his uniform and uh, they stood me against this wall. At that time, a Luftwaffe officer came up. The, the Luftwaffe man was saying, well, if he is RAF, we want to interrogate him. And the other chap was saying, no, he's a spinal saboteur and we're going to shoot him. There was a big argument went on and they were speaking in very loud voices. Whether the Luftwaffe man won or not, I don't know, but they picked me up and they threw me back down the hole. And the next day, this Luftwaffe officer comes in and he said, um, he said, I'm part of a crew of Junkers 88 and we've been detailed off to escort you to Luftwaffe interrogation headquarters. Anyway, they took me out let me have a shower and a shave and they gave me a bottle of beer and a meal and, and I, I, I really think they were trying to be decent. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org